of War Crucible tutorial. Today we will be looking at Space Marines, their strengths and weaknesses, and how to play them. First thing first, as always whenever you're learning a new faction, the best thing to do is go into a skirmish, select turn dev mode on, and go into the battle and just have a look at everything the faction does. Read the descriptions, play around with the units, just get a feel for the faction. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, Space Marines are both one of the simplest and also one of the hardest factions to play. Simple, because they are very tanky. They are probably one of, if not the tankiest faction. <clears throat> and if you're able to use their units cost-efficiently, i.e. not losing units whilst the opponent loses units, you will always come out ahead. So if you can micro your units properly and make sure you lose less than your opponent, you will be ahead. They also have a lot of deep striking and mobility capabilities later in the game. They are slow, most of their units are quite very slow, but they have transports and buildings that can compensate for that. And the last thing that makes them quite simple and easy to pick up is their versatility. Most units have a variety of weapons they can pick from, so let's say if suddenly a vehicle comes out, you can just be like, oh, I'm going uh, to equip my tactical marines with an anti-vehicle weapon, and there you go, you've dealt with the vehicle, whilst other factions may have to think about bringing out specific units to deal with that. As for their weaknesses, they are, as mentioned before, slow. And that's not just their movement speed, they are slow to reinforce, they are kind of slow to build, compared to other factions, just everything is a little bit slower than other factions to make up for their strength. And they are expensive, so if you build the wrong unit and give it the wrong weapons, or if you just don't pay attention to the your units and they die, that's a big loss compared to other factions. Your armies are very expensive, which makes them very good at fighting, but also if you lose them, that's a much bigger deal for you than it would be for other factions. So, going into the game, as always, I will go through the tiers, go through all of the units, explaining their core role in the roster, uh, whilst mentioning a few other things, notable things as well. Commanders, for Space Marines specifically, I will go over separately, simply because their commanders are quite important and a beast in and of themselves. So, yeah. So, tier 0. Straight off the bat, you have access to servitors and scouts. Scouts without weapons and without armory upgrades are probably one of the worst uh, capping infantry in the game. They are... They, simply put, on one-on-one, -on -one, they can... They lose to probably most other capping infantry except for maybe conscripts. But they make up for it with a variety of weapons that they can make use of later in the game. So, for example, if you go to your one, I have seen people get a bunch of scouts with sniper training. And just invisible scouts sniping everything around the map can be pretty fun. And obviously, worker, standard servitor. Nothing special about this guy. So, moving on to their barracks. Again, heroes will be done separately. We have Tactical Marines. These are the bread and butter of your early game roster. They are tanky, decent in melee, similar to Necron Warriors. They have, whenever they get engaged in melee, they will knock back enemies. And they do decent damage. So, decent melee. And a lot of, as you can see, a lot of weapon upgrades for different purposes. Assault Marines are your early game uh, harass unit. They are much faster than most of the rest of your roster. 
even compared to scouts, for example. As you can see, they are faster than scouts. They have a jump. They don't have weapon variety. That is their main downside. So their main purpose is to run around the map, uh, either picking off individual units or capping or decapping points and just making a nuisance of themselves. And also, as you saw, you can deep strike them straight off the bat around the map, which is also very useful. Attack bikes. These are harassment and anti-horde units. Specifically, what makes them anti-horde is this ability, which makes them go kind of crazy and this does damage to units in that area where the bike goes crazy so if in the early game you're someone let's say you're facing Terranids and they just try to swarm you with spine guns or something make sure to get an attack bike or two use this ability and most of them will be knocked back or straight up die One thing to mention, I will be going off uh, over the sub-faction units later. I will not be going over them in as much detail as your core roster. The Most of the units are pretty self-explanatory, but I will show off the sub-faction units and explain how the sub-faction plays and what are the sub-faction strengths and weaknesses. So, onto the armory. One thing to note, Space Marines get more grenades than any other faction, six total, and they're all for different purposes. So in tier zero, you get your standard frag grenade. Again, very useful. Because you have few models, it's very easy as Space Marines to get bogged down by just hordes of units. So frag grenades and inferno grenades are both very, very useful with making sure that your units can do what you need them to do. So, oh, uh, one last unit in tier zero, weapon servitors. They, their main purpose is to serve as a tier zero version of the devastators. They don't have weapon variety. Their only thing that they can really get is a thunder fire cannon later on. But their main thing is that they do a lot of damage, but are quite squishy. And they can still repair, as you can see. They can't build, but they can repair, so... Repair, and also maybe a defensive unit. If you know you're getting attacked soon, build a couple of these, put them like in between your buildings. They should be very hard to kill and target, and they will do a lot of damage in a wide radius around them. As you can see, the radius is significantly bigger than something that attacks. So, moving on to Tier 1, the only... Me uh, infantry unit that you get access to is the Devastators. These are your long range firepower. They have a big range weapon upgrades with weapon upgrades with spe which specify the specialize them versus vehicles or later on in the game just deal more damage. And yeah, pretty self explanatory. You build you have assault marines or attacks up front then Devastators in the back, and whilst the Tax and the Assault Marines are taking the damage and tying up enemy units, these guys will set up and then just absolutely destroy everything from afar. But keep in mind, to make up for only having one unit in Tier 1 in terms of infantry, you do get access to two heroes, both of which, well, three technically, but this is a builder, uh, two frontline heroes which will help you tank for the Devastators. Oh. Tier 1, you get access to two buildings, Sacred Artifact, sorry, three heroes. Uh, Chief Librarian is also uh, accessed in Tier 1. So yeah, you get three heroes. This is where hero importance becomes very vital because if you just build Devastators, they will probably... Uh, get collapsed on and die so you need the heroes or you need a lot of other troops to protect them and the heroes are pretty good at doing that so moving on to vehicles there's a lot of vehicles you get access to tier one rhino is your standard transport it can hold two units 
it can support the units and yeah runs around relatively fast much faster than most of your basic units very good with a combination with Devastators. Having two Devastator squads inside of a transport to keep them safe is a very good strategy most of the time. Okay. So Razorback is a combination of a transport and a assault vehicle. It can hold only one squad. It still has support abilities, but it does have a better weapon and it has weapon upgrades which are also pretty good. The Flamer specifically is quite good tier 1. Then there is the two Lance Beaters. These are fairly self-explanatory. They're a different flavor of harassing units. You ju they're ridiculously fast. You can jump them around. They have a big jump radius. And they have some weapons to make them better versus certain types. But their main thing isn't to participate in straight up engagements. But to run around the map and destroy uh, either pick off enemy units. Or just harass listening posts or harass enemy workers. This Landspeeder test is similar to the normal Landspeeder. But is, is an aircraft so it can go over certain terrain has a global jump as you can see rather than the small jump of a land speeder and has different weapons stalker aa is your anti-aircraft gun it does have a short range but it absolutely destroys any aircraft that get near it especially in tier one so this is your answer to other factions aircraft such as the land speeder tempest and then the damocles is a support unit. I cannot show it off here because of dev mode, but it provides detection. It provides a big radius around you uh, of just sight range. It has support abilities. It's a support vehicle, which is pretty good at supporting your army. And it also provides ranged damage reduction. One thing... Uh, I do want to mention on the topic of detection. So in tier 1 you get Chaplain and the Democles, both being detectors and the Chief Librarian. However, if you're wondering about tier 0 detection, that would be on your listening post, the Skull Probe. You can get them on most of your squads in tier 1, but you do need to be tier 1 to get them on your squads. So in tier 0, if you're fighting against, let's say, Tau, and you're like, well, shit, how the hell do I detect them? First of all, any unit is revealed if you get close to them. So if you have assault marines and you get close to the, the infiltrated units, you will detect them. Or you can get skull probes and attach them to some of your squads, and they will also provide detection. Okay. So, uh, two more vehicles to go. Dreadnought and Hellfire Dreadnought. Dreadnought is a generally versatile melee walk, melee slash ranged walker. You can either use it as a frontline vehicle to tank for the rest of your troops, or you can equip it with a variety of ranged weapons to make it into a ranged powerhouse. Hellfire Dreadnought is a more ranged focus Dreadnought. As you can see, it can't go into melee the way the normal Dreadnought can, but it automatically starts with some powerful ranged weapons and can get upgraded weapons as well later on. And that is it for tier 1. There are also Apothecaries and Standard Bearers, which you can get in the Sacred Artifact. You can also purchase them on individual squads, but sometimes it might be useful to get them here and attach them to squads instead. So, uh, moving on to Tier 2, you get access to the Gladiator Command Squad. You can only get one of these. They scale with hero upgrades, as all units in any sort of top bar do. They Their main thing is being frontline tanks, whilst being very versatile in their weapon choices. 
these different bolt guns have different purposes and they can also choose to get melee power swords if you want to just put them into melee. The other two units that you get access to is Vanguard and Sturgard Veterans. These are basically upgraded versions of the Assault Marines and Tax for the most part. There are some differences and some nuances where you might still want to get Tax except instead of Sturgard and Assault Marines instead of Vanguards, but fundamentally that's what they are. As you can see, Vanguard Veterans also very fast, also have a jump, a lot tankier, double the health despite having two models, and can get upgraded with some very powerful weapons. Stern Guard have more weapon variety. As you can see, two more weapons. They are also quite a bit tankier. And yeah about it. So uh, as for vehicles you get access to the Vindicator and Whirlwind Mark 1. Vindicator is your anti-swarm unit where it does a big explosion in an area and it knocks back and damages all squads in that area. Uh, so it's also quite good versus structure as you can see. So, no, tanky frontline vehicle which will disrupt enemy infantry and do good damage to structures. Whirlwind Mark 1 is a disruption artillery where it will do some damage, but its damage isn't high, at least not before you get your missile barrage in tier 3. But it does some okay damage and disrupts everything in an area. The other thing you get access to in tier 2 is the orbital relay. This allows you to put your units in and deep strike them around the map. And here I'll show off the dreadnought. You can see these units can come in anywhere around the map. This is the mobility later in the game that I was talking about where your units are slow and your dreadnoughts are quite slow. So if you're walking them all the way from your vehicle building onto the front lines, that can take a while, but you put them in the orbital relay and you can just put them straight into the front lines. Okay, so uh, ironclad dreadnought. Tankier than the other dreadnoughts can also uh, starts in melee but can also get a Hurricane Bolter, which is a very, very powerful ranged weapon, and has some crack missiles to go along with it, which do damage, yeah, which do damage specifically to vehicles and buildings. So that is it for tier two. Going into tier three, you get access to Land Raiders, which I will talk about slightly later, and the Deep Strike Beacon. I want to make special note of this uh, building because it allows you to get access to certain Orbital Strike abilities, which can be very useful for, again, dealing with hordes. And also, this um, both gives you a large site radius and can prevent other nuclear centers around the map from working which is very important for later in the game as everyone gets their nuclear centers and starts nuking each other you can just be like nope you don't get to do that so as for infantry in tier 3 you get access to terminators you can deep strike in them straight away and you get two flavor Term uh, just normal terminators and assault terminators normal terminators are a versatile ranged unit. They get access to weapons for dealing with different <clears throat> units and they are very tanky. As you can see again quite a step up in health and they also count as elite heavy infantry which also makes them tankier. There are upgrades in here which give them teleporters and also provide them with rocket launchers 
on their back can also be very useful. Assault Terminators are a slow but very tanky melee unit. As you can see, also a significant increase in health from the Vanguard Veterans, but much, much slower. For vehicles, you get access to the Venerable Dreadnought. This Dreadnought has is ridiculously tanky compared to others. As you can see, 3,000 more health than the Ironclad. Uh, can, can, like other Dreadnoughts, can gain access to some ranged options or just fight in melee. And again, can be deep striked into the front lines to tank for your army. You also get access to Predators, Whirlwind, and the Thunderhawk. So, Predators. Two types of Predators. Executioner is anti-infantry, especially with the Plasma Cannon that it can get. Predator it starts off as anti-vehicle, but after its last cannon upgrade, in tier 4, it can get the Conversion Beam, which is your main anti-Titan. So if you're wondering how you deal with Titans at Space Marines, there's a few ways. You can get Assault Terminators and just smack them with like Thunder Hammers. You can get the Graviton Cannon on the Terminators or the Graviton Gun on the Stern Guard Veterans. But one of their more popular uh, options is the Conversion Beam. And also there's the Whirlwind Mark II. This Whirlwind fires much faster and with more shots than the normal Whirlwind, so it's more disruption focused. This Whirlwind Mark I will do more damage, especially with the Missile Barrage, but Whirlwind Mark II will do more disruption and just, yeah. That is all the vehicles, all the infantry. So now moving on to Land Raiders. Oh, sorry, Thunderhawk. Thunderhawk is your other way of getting across the map. It can teleport anywhere on the map and you can put units inside of it and they will get teleported with it. This is your other way of getting around the map and it can build like Tac Marines and Land Speeders, but that's not too important. The important thing is being able to transport units around. You can see it flies up and then it will land over here. So, uh, land speeders, Storm Raven Fury, Relic, Aircraft, which can also be used as a transport. See, Thunderhawk over here. So, uh, it can transport units, but I've most of the time I've seen this used as a harassment vehicle where you jump it into an enemy base and then you try to kill their economy and stuff like that. You can probably, and that fits with its transporting purpose because you can uh, jump not just it, but the units inside of it as well. And with it having 8,000 health, it's not very likely to be killed. So you jump it over, you unload your units and you try to kill the enemy. So, moving on to the other Land Raiders, I won't go over them in much detail. They all have their own specialized purpose, which is described in their description. But to quickly summarize them, Phobos, just generally good Land Raider. That's your standard Land Raider. Crusader, specific specialization versus demons and can get a multi melta. Ares, good versus swarms of targets similar to the Vindicator. It has a similar Vindicator gun at the front as you can see. Redeemer good versus uh, structures uh, has a lot of heavy flamers going on. So good versus morale and structures. Helios artillery. It has a whirlwind gun on the top and can fire artillery. And Prometheus is your support where similar to the Democles, it has a sensor map, it's a detector, so yeah, support Land Raider. And all of them can transport units. So, 
Moving on to tier 4. There are a few important things going on. So first of all, you get access to your Titans. I'll go over those later. Oh yeah, uh, finishing off Land Raiders. Land Raider Terminus Ultra. This is your anti-Titan. If the enemy Titan doesn't see you coming and you're able to uh, get the jump on it or get close to it, using the Machine Spirit, this can 1v1 a Reaver Titan. Despite being much cheaper. So yeah, this is your anti-titan. It is close range, so you do need to support it to get it close to the enemy titans. But if it does, oh boy, is it going to destroy them. Okay. Let's get rid of these so that my relic starts ticking up again. I get stern guards crapping it. So, uh... Starting in tier 4, you get access to the Emperor's Armory and also the nuclear generator. Emperor's Armory has your late game powers, basically. Well, most of your late game powers. There's one in here for heroes, but we'll go over that when you, we get to heroes. So, these upgrades, you can choose only a few of them, but they provide massive buffs to a portion of your roster. You can make uh, the, your Increase your cap for infantry, make your infantry stronger, make your vehicle stronger, make your structure stronger, make one of your heroes absolutely destroy everything, make titans stronger, and gives you access to some special nukes. Very important building. Should definitely get it in tier 4. As if you have a relic, basically straight away. As soon as you go to 4, get an Emperor's Armory and consider getting one of these upgrades that you get access to in Tier 4. Okay. Thermonuclear Generator. So, um, unlike other factions, Space Marines don't have... So, unlike IG, for example, they don't have an equivalent to the Industrial Command to where you can bo bo boost your requisition. Thermonuclear generator is the only way to boost your requisition by power dumping. So you build a thermonuclear generator. It has been reworked for the newest patch, which this is this showcase is played on. So once the new patch hits the power dump, it will go over the max requisition cap. So as you can see, requisition max cap is 1,200 usually. This ignores that, which gives this viability in order to, you know, gain access to being able to reinforce stuff like terminaries. Because these cost a lot of requisitions, so you'll have a lot of spare power if you're going for infantry. So get a thermonuclear generator, hit that power dump button whenever you can, and you'll have all the requisition you'll need for all your infantry. wanted to mention that it's quite important for late game economy obviously you also get access to your nuclear center with some nukes they're nothing particularly special particle cannon which just does damage to a certain area a small area specifically nuclear missile just a big explosion and emp pulse which disables a lot of uh, things and then the Iron Curtain, which is, yeah, standard stuff. So, uh, going on to Titans, Warhound Titan. This is a, so, uh, first of all, difference between IG and Space Marine Titans and other factions Titans. Uh, Space Marine Titans are tankier and faster. That's their main thing. They are, yeah, they're tankier and faster than their IG counterparts. They do have fewer weapon variety. But uh, the Warhound Titan is still very versatile. It can get multiple different weapons, which can be used for various different things. And very good, somewhat fast Scout Titan. Reaver Titan. Let me get my Relic. So, uh, Reaver Titan, much tankier, 
but also slower and more unwieldy and fewer weapon variety where you can only get a Mega Melta and this you can only access if you do the research in the Emperor's Armory. Whilst this can get plasma guns and then the godly plasma guns after that. Going into tier 5, you get access to the Warlord and the Imperator. I'm not going to build them, they're pretty self-explanatory. Warlord has a lot of expensive weapon upgrades for different specialization. It's basically an artillery titan. It costs a lot less baseline than the Imperator, but its weapons are expensive, so it can even match the cost of an Imperator. And it will be squishier, but it will do it will still do a hell of a lot of damage. And the Imperator is the ultimate titan. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So, uh, moving on to sub-factions. Dark Angels, they have a lot of early game mobility and harassing potential, which then transitions into late game power with their Terminators. So you get access to the Ravenwing Bikes Tier 0, Ravenwing Attack Bikes Tier 1, both of which are fast harass units. These guys are good in melee, but also decent at range, and these guys can shoot while moving. They get access to the Landspeeder Vengeance Tier 2, which is a weapon that can fire whilst moving. It's very squishy. It's a glass cannon. It can jump. It's fast. It's very squishy, but it does a hell of a lot of damage. And then their late game power comes from their Deathwing Knights and Deathwing Terminators. With both of uh, these, you get access in tier three. These you get access to in tier four. Deathwing Knights. Specific thing to note: their sergeant provides a movement speed buff to Terminators. So Terminators are slow. Well, not so slow now, which is very good, especially for assault Terminators. And the Deathwing Terminators, they have same weapon profiles as the normal Terminators, but they are tankier, do not have morale, and their sergeant provides them ridiculous melee damage upgrades, which means that they become good at both ranged and melee. Yep. Moving on to other sub-factions. Salamanders are a kind of tanky uh, but slow army focused on vehicles and heavy infantry. So the first thing you get access to is tier 1 is Salamander Fire Drakes. These are kind of the equivalent of the Stern Guards, but ones that you get access to in tier 0. As you can see, they're basically as tanky, but they lack the weapon variety and their weapons are close range. So they're your frontline unit. Later on, when I go over the builds, I will go over a specific push des uh, around these guys along with Devastators. Then in Tier 2, they get access to three vehicles. Uh, the Predators are self-explanatory. They're up. Their side weapons can be upgraded to serve different needs, but their main weapon is either a big AOE that's good versus infantry and buildings, or a big multi melta. Yeah. And um, that is good versus vehicles and titans. And the rapier, which is. Uh, late game artillery, well, you get access to it in tier 2, but its real viability comes in in tier 3 and 4, where these is kind of like a version of the Whirlwind or of the Whirlwind Mark 2, but specifically focused on killing vehicles, demons, and titans. 
So then in tier three, you get access to uh, the venerable ironclad dreadnought, which is just obscenely tanky, does a hell of a lot of damage, and also has a chance to revive upon death. So you use this as a frontline walker, either in range or in melee, and it just, you know, ruins all your enemy's plans by just existing. And then the Salamander Fire Drakes, with their unique feature being their, not just their tankiness, but their ability to repair themselves. Where they have... They're specifically good versus demons because of their fire thunder hammers and yeah versus demons uh, and living metal and they have this master artisans ability which means they can heal damage very quickly but they are disabled so you get them into the fight they get low you teleport them out you heal them you get them back into the fight so yeah tanky army heavy infantry lots of different vehicles and last but not least is the Raven Guard, which are in the right hands, probably the most powerful option, but the caveat is in the right hands. They are difficult to use properly. So, uh, Storm Talon is a gunship, has a weapon up the front later on. If you're wondering why it has this tab, in tier 2 it will get extra weapon upgrades it can get. And the uh, Landspeeder Storm, it in itself, is just a very good Landspeeder. It can go invisible whilst moving, and moving very, very fast. And it can also build Raven Guard Scouts. And Raven Guard Scouts are special because they have a Corrosion Grenade and a Terror Grenade, which are both extremely powerful. Corrosion Grenade will eat away at enemy armor, making them much easier to kill, and Terror Grenade will just absolutely destroy morale and make the enemy virtually unable to do any damage at range for a small amount of time. You cannot get these in here, and that's by design. You need to get either a land speeder storm or later on the shadow hawk to be able to build the scouts so moving on to tier two they get access to the shadow masters and the ziff and pattern interceptor interceptor is an air-to-air -air fighter it does good damage to vehicles and aircraft so if there's any aircraft around or if you're dealing with vehicles get this it will deal with them and shadow masters are space marine snipers who shred enemy armor when they attack them so as you may note there's a lot of armor shred and kind of control abilities which are very very powerful if used correctly but these units are squishy all of them are very very squishy well except for the ziff and pattern interceptor it's quite tanky but all of these units are very squishy, and if you're caught out of position, they will die very quickly. So then, tier 3, you get access to the Shadow Hawk. This is a Thunder Hawk that is cloaked, and can build the Land Speeders and the Scouts. Not much else to say. Thunder Hawk cloaked. Which, don't get me wrong, it's very powerful to have your Thunderhawk be cloaked, but there's not much particularly interesting to say about it. It's just powerful. And then in Tier 4, you get access to the Assault Centurions. These boys are also very tricky, where they are invisible while standing still, so they're very good for ambush tactics. And not only are they good in melee, but they have these long-range grenade launchers, which do a good damage to infantry, so you can have them hold their position to become invisible. And then when the moment is right, you spray the enemy with grenade launchers and teleport in. Very, very powerful ambush tactics, but is difficult to use. And these are also quite tanky, as you can see on par with the fire drakes. 
but fire drakes can heal themselves, these guys can't. And that's it for the sub factions. So, moving on to heroes. Brother Captain, there's four main heroes in the Space Marine roster. There is the Brother Captain, Force Commander, Chaplain, and the Chief Librarian. Brother Captain and Force Commander are your frontline, main frontline fighters. They get a lot of weapon and armor upgrades that just make them very, very tanky. <clears throat> and yeah, they go into the front lines, they tank for the rest of your army, especially in the early game. Chaplain is a tanky support unit where it has a healer. It's able to demoralizing the morale enemy squads. And it is still very tanky. But it is more of a support unit. And Chief Librarian is a full support unit. It doesn't get any war gear per se. It gets just a bunch of different abilities which are all useful in their own way. And yeah, it will be always very squishy. But in at hero level 3, it does get a halo shield which protects it from range damage quite significantly. But be careful when putting him in melee, as enemy melee units will be able to kill him very, very quickly. So, uh, another thing to talk about is that most of the war gear that you get access to, you get access to at levels either 3 or level 5. So you can see, level 5 is where you get their, your main other melee weapon. So this is where you want to stop. So you you need to decide when you get your heroes what level you're going to be leveling them to. If you're getting them like tier 0, tier 1, you could not upgrade the brother captain at all in tier 0. And then when you go tier 1 and get your force commander and chaplain and chief librarian, you can upgrade them to tier 3 because the levels are shared and get all of their war gear, which is a big investment, but will make the heroes very, very powerful. And then the other breaking point is tier 5. It's when Chief Librarian gets all of his abilities, and when the rest of these guys get access to their best weapons, like the Demon Hammer, the Thunder Hammer, all of that good stuff. Okay. The other thing to note is that there is a research in the Sacred Artifact called Grand Promotion, which will turn the Brother Captain, Force Commander, and Chaplain into basically their Terminator versions. Where you get it, boom. Brother Captain is now the Chapter Master, Force Commander is now a Terminator armor, and Chaplain is now in Terminator armor. This does make these two specifically much slower, but they are much, much tankier. This is why I wanted to talk about Space Marine Heroes separately, because they get more late game support than most other heroes, where being able to use make them this tanky and do the da still do the damage that they do is quite something. The other thing to note is that the Emperor's Armory can make your... <clears throat> in Tier 5 can make your Brother Captain... Uh, sorry, Chapter Master even stronger. Where it gives him a Relic Blade which will destroy even Titans. So that is all for their roster. There are a few buildings that I haven't mentioned, but all the, all the rest of it should be pretty self-explanatory as you build them. So, as always, I suggest just go into a game and play around with all of this yourself. So next, we will move on to a build order or two with Space Marines. So our first build order will be using the... Dark Angels and specifically their early game bike power to overwhelm the enemy. 
you can achieve similar effect with assault marines and <clears throat> the normal attack bikes. However, I will be showing it off how to do it with also the sub-faction units that support that sort of aggress aggressive playstyle. This build can be a bit micro-intensive, where you need to make sure you're capping your listening post and making sure that you're doing all the economy things on your side of the map, whilst also being aggressive on the other side of the map. If that's not your style, then I recommend you look to the second build that I will do. That will be a more general build that can be adapted to most any sort of big pushes play. So as always, you start off with a servitor, three scouts, and two servitors. This is standard build order. You want to upgrade your first servitor with a second squad member just so he can build the barracks faster. We want to be building the chapter hall. And we will be building an Assault Marine out of this. And then hopefully by the time that Assault Marine is built, we would have built the Chapter Hall and we can move on to the sub-faction units. Now I'll start building the Chapter Hall whilst my listening posts are capping. One thing to note is with Space Marines, you do want to go for two generators rather than one of some other factions. This is because you need the power to get grenades and things like that. So whenever I can afford it, I'll get the squad of Assault Marines. It's not important to get, it's not as important to get them straight away, simply because they can deep strike. And it is more important to make sure that you get your economy up and running. So, looks like we found ourselves in a position where we get the squad of bikes before we get the assault marines. That's fine. That's not a big deal. I'm not doing this build order perfectly because there's. I want to show off its power, not that I am a good player and that I can micro and do everything perfectly. Again, you would probably want to do this. Ooh, demons. Demons are a perfect showcase of this, so that's great. That's actually very good for us. Because bikes, remember the burnout ability I mentioned? That is specifically good versus factions like demons. So let's get a second member. And let's start harassing. Let's try to kill the enemy workers. Ooh, there's a big squad of... And this is where we get to use the Burnout. As you can see, does a hell of a lot of damage to the Furies. And just absolutely nearly destroys two squads. Whilst that is happening, make sure that all of the listening posts are being built. Let's get a squad of Assault Marines. You can... Because of the vehicle uh, cap of bikes unless you want to get this upgrade which is quite expensive early you can only get one but that's fine that one squad of bikes did an amazing amount of work for us it is fighting multiple squads of demons at the same time and it will continue to do a lot of work for us And as you can see, I am absolutely destroying these demons. I'm in their base. I can get my squad of assault marines out. And there you go. Now you can play a bit more defensive, get all your listening posts upgraded, and continue from here. You can go tier 1, get raving wing attack bikes to fire on the move. Again, also very good versus demons. Ooh, this ability is back can see absolutely destroys and there we go I won't continue this game 
despite the demons not actually being dead, the game is basically over. They're sitting on two, well, three listening posts. I am sitting on more than half of the map. My listening posts are upgraded and I can easily go for more bikes or just get some devastators in tier one and finish them off. So let's move on to the next game. Welcome. Our second build is going to be using the Salamander Fire Drakes as a kind of timing push. So we will build very few troops in tier 0, three squads of scouts and either a tax squad or an assault marine squad depending on which opponent we're facing. And then we're going to go straight into tier 1 and go Devastators and Salamander Fire Drakes. So the beginning is always the same. You want to build a servitor, three scouts, two servitors. Again, get a second worker, just so the barracks build faster. For this, we will not be building the chapter hall as early as we did before. Queuing the scouts onto different posts. We're gonna help build the first generator and let's get our assault marine straight away. This one is done. Have these run over here, have these run over here. There we go. First. Uh, for this one, it is... For the other one, you wanted the generators because the bikes cost power. For this one, you do want the generators specifically for the grenades. Either way, it is a good idea to have <clears throat> uh, two generators regardless, which I'll start building the second one as soon as this post is finished. Just need a little bit more rec. There we go. There we go. Let's send the assault marines in to harass the enemy. Just keep them on their toes. If you are being aggressive, then that lowers the chances of your enemy being able to be aggressive against you. So it's always good to control the pace of the game. Especially in a game where having map control is key. So let's start upgrading our listening posts as we're finishing building them. Let's try to kill the workers. Jump over here, see what they're doing over here. Okay, they have a listening post there, can't do much about that. Well, they upgraded that listening post. Okay. They have a listening post there. Ooh this point they haven't actually put a listening post down so let's decap that that will slow them down quite a bit if I can finish decapping it tier one tier one wait until this finishes building there we go this finished we probably want a third generator here oh that's a shame the squad died oh well that's fine not a big deal for this build. They did their job, which is to buy you space. The uh, Dark Eldar were stuck on their side of the map, and now, as you can see, I have multiple crits. And even if these scouts die, it's not a big deal. It's just freeing up pop for the units I actually want. So, let's get a third and probably actually a fourth generator down. Let's put the fourth one here for now. It does take a lot of resources to upgrade all of your listening posts. So as you can see, that's why we needed the power. Despite having two gens quite early, we're still kind of running low. Should have probably built the third gen earlier. There we go. Let's build the armory whilst we're going tier one and probably build a fifth generator as well. We will need the power for the Devastator Marines and the Salamander Fire Drakes. 
So the armory will finish building. Then the chapter barracks will hopefully finish building just around the time that the chapter hall finishes. Let's get the grenades. As you can see, grenades cost a lot of power and you do want them. Great, we're tier 1. Let's start getting some squads of devastators as soon as the power is coming in. Since we are running low on power, let's get the increased power income. And there we go, start with you. Salamanders, start with squad of you. Ooh, right on time. Dark Eldar are trying to attack the listening posts. That's fine. Listening posts are quite powerful in the early game. So unless your enemy... Yeah, as you can see, unless your enemy spends a lot of their resources to try to kill a listening post, it won't do all that much. Deep Strike our first squad. Let's get a second squad. Actually, yeah, both of those are three supply. I'll actually kill my own scouts to free up the supply without having to do this. Let's get the these upgrades. These are all important. And we have two squads of each, so we can start going. Reinforce them. Start reinforcing them as well. And look at that, our requisition is going away as soon as we are forcing. So we want crack grenades to deal with buildings. And let's get smoke grenades so the enemy range damage doesn't hurt us as much. Let's get the sergeants. And let's start... I'm not sure what I want if I'm on the flamer or the melter yet. So let's wait on that, but we definitely want some multi melters just in case on our Devastators, so let's get those. Okay, we don't seem to be dealing with a lot of vehicles, so let's get the Flamer. Throw the crack grenade. Let's throw a smoke grenade in here so we take less damage. Another crack grenade on the listening post. And make sure. As you can see, these two, these four squads are wrecking absolute havoc. So whilst they're doing all of that, again, this is a timing push. This doesn't necessarily need to kill your enemy. This is a check. It's a, hey, do you have enough to deal with this check? Yes, no. If no, you die. If yes, that's fine. You don't lose all that much. And you can just kind of continue the attack later. So again, let's put a smoke grenade on top of our cell so we take less damage. As you can see, these Salamander Fire Drakes are absolutely tanking everything uh, whilst outputting good damage. And it looks like the Dark Eldar ran out of things, so I can just walk into their base, kill their production buildings. As you can see, the Flamers are doing very... the Combi Flamers are doing very good damage to buildings. And there we go. That's that. So, you can do, do this with a combination of Tactical Marines, Assault Marines, and Devastator Marines, and maybe Heroes on top of it. But as you can see, the Fire Drakes are very good for this kind of timing push, if you choose to do so. Oh yeah, you should also get these, especially since you can get multiple of the same leader. There we go. Game is basically over. I killed all of their production buildings. I killed most of their army. 
Uh, this fight was won on two things. First of all, I as soon as I hit tier 1, I started building these units in tier 1. The Dark Eldar was still using a lot of tier 0 units, they didn't get vehicles out or anything like that. And two, good use of grenades. Using the crack grenades on the listening post to kill it, using the smoke grenades on ourselves to take less damage from stuff. This is an, a very important part of Space Marines. Because of the flamers, the combi flamers, I knew I could deal with infantry and my main problem would be just taking chip range damage from other sources. Oh yeah, you can also get the skull probe. I should have gotten it to deal with the invisibility, but there was a need for it. And as you can see, this game is done. So, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this guide. Hopefully it was informative to you. Any questions, feel free to leave in the comments or we have a Discord server where you can ask questions as well, either on the mod or specific factions or sub-factions. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed and see you in the next one.